I am. Says I am. This book calls me an overcomer, and that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging Word of God. So my mind is alert, my heart is receptive as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes. By hearing, by hearing and hearing by, and hearing by the word of God. word of God. Gracious Father, we love you and we praise you. And we declare again in this house, nothing is impossible with you. And that with you all things are possible. And we thank you, God, for an act of faith. We thank you for what we're about to receive, God. We thank you for what you're going to give to these, your people, God, that we'll have ears to hear, God. We thank you for a fresh loaf today. We thank you for good bread. We thank you that you want us to eat well. And we thank you. Now, Lord, let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And they all said together, Amen. Amen. Today we're going to talk from the, the subject of working faith. Working faith. I want to open up by saying,
that you have blank faith and it just works. But your faith works. It works. An act of faith has some qualifiers that lead to production. This is going to bless you. Number one, faith works by love. I've taught that over and over again. Faith works by love. And number two, faith must have works. Faith must have works. Now, this is not working to be saved. It's after you get saved through faith that your faith has works. Not just enough to become a Christian and come to church or, or whatever it is that once you are a believer and, and, and you trust God by faith, your faith works. And while we were reading Isaiah 43 today, God had prompted me, the Holy Spirit did, and says, tell them that their faith works in declaring, making, making word professions out of their mouth. That's their faith working. They shall come from the north, the south, the east, and the west. That's your faith work. Your declaration is, is, is a working faith. Do you get that? That's why you don't need to pray silently. Do everything out loud in the devil's face. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Amen. Except maybe when you're at work and you, you know, you judge righteously. Amen? Yeah. Amen. But that's your work of faith, your confession of your mouth too. The number two one, faith must have works that I gave, requires us to physically do something. Your faith requires some action. People just want to say, I have faith, but you don't want to do anything. It requires action. To get your faith up into continuous action, you must agitate it with work. You have faith, but is it agitated to do something? You got to agitate it to do something. The work I'm speaking of here is not labor as in gardening, in a factory, or at a computer, but the work of faith is doing something as it relates to the kingdom. I, I read a story while I was pulling the lesson together about a man who had a, 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 a rowboat, a nice sized rowboat, and one paddle, he put faith on the, the wide part of the paddle, and on the other paddle, he put works. Well, he took off from shore, and he hit a little turbulent water, and he just took up one of the paddles, faith, and he started paddling with it, but he, the water was rough, and so he started turning around in a circle because he was only rowing with one oar. And then he put the faith one down and picked up the work one, and he started rowing with that one, and he started going in the opposite way in another circle, but he was still headed to dangerous territory. He wasn't able to row well until he picked both paddles up and started rowing. Faith works. You have to roll with both of them. You want to get somewhere, roll with both of them. Can't statically say, I have faith, but you don't do anything. Amen. And you can't work without faith. Amen. Not in this kingdom. You can't work without faith. James says something interesting in James 2.17, which is going to be the crux of where we're going to stay the remainder of this message. Then, then, thus also, faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. Wow. You have faith, but you don't have any work, so it's dead. It's not producing. Dead means unable to produce fruit for your life. It's dead. 
And if you aren't getting a great faith production, is there some work in front of the harvest? There's got to be work in front of the harvest. Wow, wow, wow. Let's explore James 2, 21 through 24. If you go to a great faith person, I'm going to explain it one way, and then I'm going to unpack this same passage another way, probably using King James Version. This first one is, is New King James. But you don't have to go to King James Version, uh, Josh. James 2, 2, 2, 21 through 24, and it says... Was not Abraham our father justified by works? Justified means made right. He made righteous. Wasn't he made right by works when he offered Isaac his son on the altar? What? He was made right by getting ready to kill his son? Oh. Oh. Do you see that faith was working together with his works? Whoa. No, you don't see it. You think you see it. But I'm going to show it to you. And by works, faith was made perfect. Whoa. You mean your faith is imperfect until works join it? It don't get perfect or does not get perfect until you join it with works. That's when the scripture said, let faith have her. My God. And the scripture was fulfilled which says, Abraham believed God. And it was accounted or, or he got credit for it. For righteousness. He was right by what his works did in faith. And he was called the friend of God. The only way you will become a friend of God is that you will have works that are of your faith. Oh, I am a friend of God. Keep singing it and not work it. You see then that a man is justified, made right by works and not by, come on, it's up there, and not by what? You are made right by your faith works. Did everybody get that? In this passage of scripture, we see faith with works. When Abraham offered Isaac, he was made righteous. He believed God when God asked him to sacrifice Isaac. What is the word? Believing God to do what he says in spite of what you see as the outcome. That's faith. Believing God to do what he says in spite of what stuff looks like around you. Oh, God. It is the imagined outcome that stops the work of faith. It's what you imagine is an outcome in the natural that stops you from believing God. I'm going to be broke forever. If I give, I won't have enough to take care of me. If I don't, take, if I don't hold something back, if I hold it back, I won't have enough to take care of this emergency that come up. And an emergency is, is ten times greater than what you got in the bank. Who can stop a stage four cancer? Your 401k. Amen. Okay, I'm just trying to help. Amen. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Amen. That's when your imagination runs away with you, but that's when your faith ought to have works. Yes. See, yes. see, see. And we don't understand one thing leads to another. It's, no. it's all connected. God doesn't disjoin. Do this. Do this. He said, this leads to this, and this leads to that, and that leads to that. Yes. Yes. Whew. But as long as we're running that fantasy in our head of outcomes, and it's usually the worst outcome. So inevitably, you're trusting only in you. 
Well, I learned a while ago, I am not trustworthy. For me. Do you understand how I said that? I'm not all I need. I cannot be everything to myself. When you're 20 and 21, you think you're all of that. Because yes. ain't nothing hurting. You don't wear no corrective lenses. You don't wear nothing. You just get up. You jump out of bed, shower. You never stop. You, just, you, you never think about it. Still happens at 25. It still may be going on at 30. And after 30... Thirty-five, you start hearing stuff around you. Forty, you know you're not twenty no more. Come on, come on. I'm trying to help you. We are decaying day by day. So you can't you can't trust nothing that's going backwards. I know we try to hold it. We getting injections. We getting Toxbo and Botox and <laughs> Juverna and, and, and Alverna, all them things. We we propping it up. We getting jaws. We getting <laughs> augmentation. Everything that ain't propped up is tied up. So. Some people had so much plastic surgery, that, like Joan, uh, uh, whatever her name is, she said she's going to keep getting plastic surgery until her ears meet in the back. Her, I don't know whether she ever accomplished it. She's gone now. But they might have laid on her ears. I don't know, you know. Are y'all out there? Amen. You better trust in something that's ageless. Yes. Yes. With works. Yes. Yes. Believe in God to do what he says. That's works. In spite of what you see as the outcome. Amen. Amen. How many of you, no matter what you hear, you, you, you can visualize an outcome. That's your next thing. Yes. How many of you know I'm right about that? How many is the outcome always positive? We go to the dimmest, darkest thing. Then we pray to God and, and, and try to hope it back into the light. Amen. Amen. It is the imagined outcomes that stops the work of faith. Write that down. It is the imagined outcome. It's all in your natural. Abraham had to be conflicted in himself. For three days, he climbed a mountain on the way to sacrifice Isaac, probably asking, how? Why? This is the son of my old age that you promised would be the seed of countless generations to come, yet unborn. They will be like stars and like sand, but you want me to take him up to the top of this mountain and, and, and sacrifice him. How? Why? The thing that made Abraham right was that he believed God more than his own thinking. Ooh. Everybody say, that's hard. This pinpoints the problem with many of us. We believe our future fantasy rather than the word of God. We believe our fantasy rather than the word of God. And we live there. Yes. It controls what we do. Yes. Our giving our everything. Our serving our everything. Who are you saving it for? Who are you reserving it for? You only got one life. Amen. This is not dress rehearsal for the time that you go on stage. 
This is all the life you got. However old you are, this is it. Anybody expecting some more life? If you want supernatural results, you must trust the supernatural God. Wow. Supernatural, simply say it this way, is God super on your natural. Making you more super than natural. And for you to believe the supernatural, your faith has to have some works. Then you will see the supernatural in operation. Yes. Oh, God. Yes. Let's unpack James 2, 22 through 24 some more. And I'm going to say King James Version Why? And it starts by saying, do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? James uses the Old Testament to demonstrate what he has already said about the character of living faith. Showing that a faith that is not accompanied with works is dead faith that cannot save. Your faith got you saved, but it was joined with a work. What was that work? After you got saved, that's faith. What was the work? You repented. That's the work. And when you truly get saved and repent, it is a perfected faith. Does that make sense? Amen. That's why I wonder when folk can get saved, but you can't come back no more. You get saved, but you can't live a certain way anymore. You, 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 you can't live for him. You, when you get saved, you repent. Yes. 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 Ooh, that's the work. Amen. Wow. Was not Abraham our father justified? Here's some more scripture reading. By works when he offered Isaac his son on, on the altar. James properly estimates that Abraham actually did offer Isaac his son on the altar. Abraham actually offered Isaac. People say, no, he didn't. He didn't kill him. He lived, and here we sit. He, he, he did. But he actually offered Isaac on the altar. He actually altered, offered Isaac on the altar. Are y'all listening? Even though the angel stopped him from actually killing his son, Yet he had offered Isaac his son. He had offered Isaac. In his firm resolution and intention to obey God, it's as if Abraham had already sacrificed Isaac. Ooh. When you believe God, no matter what, you are resolute in your obedience. While he was spending three days marching him up the side of the mountain, Isaac was good as dead to his daddy. Ooh. 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 That's the only way you can get to the altar and raise the knife because he'd been dead for three days. He was dead from the time that, uh, that Abraham decided... I am going to obey God in spite of everything God has told me in this thing. I'm going to obey God. So it's as if him and Isaac walked up the mountainside with the knife drawn. Are y'all there? Do y'all see this? And I know every now and then, every step, what is Sarah going to think? I'm going to obey God. <laughs> this is the only kid I got. I'm going to obey God. I'm 90 plus years old. I'm going to obey God. 
I don't care what folks say. I'm going to obey God. I know God might have slipped on this one, so I'm not going to do it. No, no, I'm, I'm resolute in my intention to obey. Come on, come on, come on. When you get resolute in your intention, you will obey God no matter what your fantasy says. No matter what your imagination says, you will obey God. Ooh, ooh, that's rough, isn't it? Yes, yes. Somebody say, obey God. Obey God. That's rough to do. Because we, we, we want to obey what makes us money. We want to obey what our passion is, but we don't want to obey God. And that's why something that the knife gets raised over, it doesn't get snatched and it ends up dying is because we won't obey God. Oh. Oh. In his firm resolution and intention, he would surely have completed the act had God not stopped him. He would have completed it if God had not stopped him. I believe it got so tight till the knife was off. Stopped him. Said, go look. Faith was working together with his works. And by works, faith was made perfect. So in his obedience... He became the faithful Abraham. That God could trust him to obey in any situation. No matter what. He had already proved it when he left home. He said, where well, you going to a city whose builder and maker is God? That's before Isaac showed up. He had started. God said, yeah, I think I can trust him. But then God tried him again with something that was more dearer than just a walk out of his hometown. Oh, what would you do if God said, you know, lay Lucille on the altar? Some of y'all would leave the church. (laughs) Throw him up on the altar. I use mine because I don't want to call y'all kids' name. You really get tight. What, what, what if he asked you to throw him up on the altar to test your obedience? And let me get crazy. What if he didn't tell the angel to stop him? Oh, y'all don't want even, nobody to even say nothing bad to him. Oh. What if he say, throw him up there? I want to see who you love. I want to see who can get the best obedience out of you. Oh, oh, it stopped being pretty. It stopped being a Bible story. Because you saw somebody, no, I ain't laying my child pack to talk like a fool today. But what if he did that? Throw them up there in their brand new jeans. And they brand new pierced. Piercings, throw them up there. With their new tattoo, throw, throw them up there. They torn jeans, throw them up there. Ooh. I know they the passion of your life, throw them up there. I want to see who you love the most. Ooh. Do you love enough to let me kill them? So it can be said of you, I obeyed God. Oh, it it stopped being, oh, oh, it's still the Holy Ghost. Oh, boy, it it, it, it made us raggedy because sometimes we love this more than we love that. And and it's proven in what we operate in. We let them slide and let God go. Oh, oh. 
Oh, 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 oh. That, that, okay, I'm, I'm going to get back to this because y'all looking at me kind of. Let me drink some water and kind of. His faith was proven true, was completed, was made perfect. Here's the proof that faith cannot exist without being active in works of righteousness. His faith in God would have been of no avail to him had it not been manifested through works. Your faith is no good to God unless you got works attached to it. Ooh, wow. And that's not works of salvation. That's, that's, that's kingdom works. You see then that a man is made right by works, not by faith only. The faith only that will not justify a man is a faith that is without works. A dead faith, but true faith, living faith, shown to be true by good works, will alone justify. It is faith that justifieth the man. Works must accompany a genuine faith because genuine faith is always connected with regeneration, being born again. I'm born again, but I repented. That's faith. Works. So scripture supports faith and works. It is the combination that produces works causing the will of God to be done in the earth. And you, you might say, well, pastor, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't get it. Let's, 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 let's go back. I'm, I'm going to give you some places where it is. But there was a quote that I wanted to give you from, from Bill Winston. Bill Winston says this. Just in case you're trying to make sense of stuff. Bill Winston said this. He said, what God says does not make sense. <laughs> it does not make sense. It makes faith. Because once it hits your senses, you, oh, no, no, the devil is a liar. You rebuke it. It don't make sense. It's not supposed to make sense to you, but it'll make faith. Because God said it. Because every time God speaks, it's a faith. It don't make sense. Sometimes when he asks you to do something, Oh, God, why should I do that? Don't make sense. How many of you know I'm right about that? He'll, he'll, he'll tell you, do this for somebody. You say, they got more than I got. Why should I do that? It don't make sense. But it makes faith. And that's what you want to be made. Because your faith must have Because your sense will keep you from working in faith. Your thinking. Yes. And this is how we do it. When we know in our heart what's the right thing to do, we'll go ask a, a, a significant person. And we start the conversation by, what you think about this? I heard this. What you think about this? Because you want somebody to confirm your sense. Yes. But they, won't com they will confirm your sense, but won't confirm God's faith. And you wonder why it failed, because you, you went from a sense to a sense. Somebody that knew less than you. <laughs> to make you feel good about what you just asked. They didn't know no better, and they wouldn't admit to you. And they wouldn't dare tell you, just trust God. Because that's faith. They'd rather tell you something. Well, you know, I think giving this set of variables and this situation and that situation. Well, you know, I lived and I've seen some things that I... 
and you're still behind the eight ball. But you done lived some things. You sure did. But you weren't victorious over those things. Because it was in the senses. And not in the work faith realm. Ooh. Are y'all out there? Amen. Faith works of, of, of Abraham were, were, were this. It was the good work of obedience. Obedience is a good work. Ooh. Obedience is a good work. And that was the good work that perfected the faith of Abraham. Obedience. God will tell you, surrender your life. And you say, I'm not ready. That don't make sense. He, he didn't ask you, were you ready? He said, surrender it. Your readiness is not his issue. How many of you ready to die? How you get ready to die? It's going to happen whether you're ready or not. Ready or not, here I come. It's going to happen. You think you can hold it? Uh, you know what death next year is about this time? Me and you. You're not ready. And I mean, that's for 99 some percent of the populace. It, it, it just happens. Yes. Some of us push it because we take something to get ourselves out of here. Either slowly or quickly. When asked to offer Isaac as well as faith was proven true, was completed, and it was made perfect. You are justified by that faith. Now, now as I come to a, to a close, I want to give you some scripture background for faith works. I'm just going to just run through them right quick. Some, some, you need some scriptures to confirm the whole theory, the whole idea, the whole principle, the whole Bible pathway of faith works. One, one is from Joshua 2, 4, and 6. Uh, verses 4 through 6, where Rahab the harlot, who isn't even saved, it said Rahab the harlot. That's how they mention her. She was a whore that had a business at the city gates of Jericho. She had a whorehouse at the gates of Jericho where the visitors came through. She was a wise woman. And she was rich because she knew her market. Come on. Come on. But how did she end up in Hebrews 11, the hallmark of faith? How did she get there? And in the lineage of Jesus. How did she get there? Rahab the whore. That's why you can't discount nobody. Because you try to discount them and make them unworthy. And you look up, they in the kingdom. How you get in here? Because he's their God too. Wouldn't that serve it? So Rahab, when the spies came, it had been noised about how powerful Israel was. And Rahab hid them in her house up in the, she, she buried them in the thickets, covered them with hay and everything. So when the king asked, Has they, have they come? She said, oh, they, 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 oh, you know, I saw them, but they went that away. So that they could plunder Jericho finally. And when they did, she ended up in faith because her faith in the God of Israel. Had some works. Yeah. She hid some spies. Yeah. Do you see it? Yeah. And so that faith work caused her to be in Hebrews along with Sarah and Abraham. Yeah. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Y'all better get this today. Yeah. Well, well, you don't believe me. Let me give you another one. Uh, uh, Daniel. 
1132, it says, Those who do wickedly against the covenant, he shall corrupt with flattery. But the people who know their God, say that with me, the people who know their God, shall be, what is the next word? No, no, shall be, shall be, and, what are exploits? Come on, come on, is it in your Bible? This is Daniel talking here. When you know your God, in faith you will carry out great exploits. Come on, come on. Daniel was a faith man. <laughs> Paul, uh, Paul, 2 Thessalonians 1.11. Therefore we also pray always for you that our God would count you worthy of this calling and fulfill all the good pleasures of his goodness and the work of faith with power. What is it? The work of what? The work of what? Okay, you're still not there. 1 Timothy 6, 18. Let them do good that they may be rich in what kind of works? Ready to do what? Okay, okay. Your giving is good works. Let me, let me say that again. Giving is good works. Stinginess is not mentioned in the Bible. This all they getting. You want him to get rid of this, but you giving him this. And then you come to a man or woman of God and you want us to pray it all for you. That's a risky business. Oh, Lord, uh, you, you don't like that. Faith without works. Faith without works is. Faith without works is. So the believer's faith is a believing action through works. The combination becomes the fruit of your life. That's when the scripture said. Blessed are the dead who die in the Lord. They do rest from their and their do follow them. Blessings to you today. Come on, you got to have some works in here. Don't live your whole life coming to church and not have no works. Your works going to follow you where to the throne of God to be read. What did you do? What did you do with what I gave you? Come on, give God another praise in this house. in this room your faith need works don't give God another excuse he knows who you are he knows where you are don't give him he you know and he loves you just as much as he loved Rahab that he will put her in the hallmark of faith and says it was accounted to her for righteousness it was righteous it was righteous it was righteous by what she did, believing in the God of Israel. That same God is still over us today. If you are in this room and you need to make a decision for to give him your life, if you're away from your church, if you're not in your church, you need to be somewhere serving with some faith works. You need to be saved, you need to restore need to be filled you need to come back to the house of the faith any one of those everybody looking up at me 
Don't even get busy doing anything else. Not the offering envelope, not nothing. And all of you that are saved ought to be praying. This was a straight dose from the kingdom of God. If that's you, right where you're sitting, just slip up a hand. I'm not going to embarrass you, ask you to do anything. We're just going to pray with you over the decision you made. But we need your witness and cooperation. And if you believe what you heard today, and you trust the word of God today, If that's you, just slip up a hand. I don't care where you at or what. It it doesn't matter. It's about here and now. Slip that hand up. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. This is my work as a preacher. To call people into the kingdom of God. Father, we thank you for what you've richly given to us today. That we will come behind in no thing that you have designed for us. We thank you that faith works by love. But we also know faith without works is dead. We thank you for an active faith that works. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Give God another good praise in this house.